what we were able to do is uh, that uh, we used uh, uh, light ion beams, helium ion beams, to modify this material in a way that not only the pores decreased in size, but also the material, which is normally brittle, it become like plastic. You know, small objects, such as small molecules, such as uh, uh, the uh, um, smallest molecules of life, proteins, for example, they all have certain sizes. And uh, different molecules have different size. If you imagine you would have a sieve that could separate those molecules by size, and to tailor the size of the pore in the sieve, so that each molecule with only one specific size would be able to pass through. That would be really very interesting. The real problem is that there are so many different molecules that uh, the size of those molecules, it varies so broadly and continuously. There are thousands and millions of different molecules. And uh, we found the process that uh, the pores that are now suitable to let some larger molecules, then if they shrink by a certain amount, then they could uh, separate larger molecules from small molecules. So small molecules would pass through, while larger molecules would be filtered out. And uh, that sieve would be used in applications under extreme conditions and uh, would be able to separate uh, chemicals, uh, molecules in uh, applications, uh, for example, in uh, pharmaceutics, in forensics, and uh, in uh, chemical engineering in general. A large group of material science and engineers at QET, we combined the efforts to design and uh, manufacture materials with uh, new and unique properties for diverse range of applications in real life from structural materials for buildings, materials for roads, for infrastructure, to some materials that enable functioning of uh, ultra-sensitive sensors, devices uh, for uh, detection of uh, uh, disease, for uh, many other purposes. There are three helium ion microscopes in Australia and um, the instrument that you're seeing in the background here is the first helium ion microscope that went out of the factory. Well, we can look at all sorts of different materials from metals to um, anodized aluminium oxide. We can have a look at biological samples, for example, at dragonfly wings. Um, it really, the opportunities are endless. You can look at almost anything. So how the helium ion microscope works is that you have, um, you have a tip at the, at the top that is so sharp that you only have three atoms at the top. And um, we flush helium gas around it that gets ionized and then that gets accelerated down onto the sample. And um, when the helium ions hit the sample, they create a signal that detectors then see. And what we, have, what we can do is we can, instead of looking into the microscope, we actually look at the, um, at the screen and we can see more or less in real time what the sample looks like and um, if the sample is changing. For example, when, um, when we irradiate the um, anodized aluminum oxide sample with the helium ions, we can see in real time how the pores actually go and shrink and get smaller.